Good morning. Welcome to another move session with me. <laughs> Oops, I just shared to the wrong group. No, I didn't. There we go. How are you? Say hi as you're jumping on. Great to see you. We're going outside today. I love being outside, to be honest. It bummed me. <laughs> morning, Corinne. How are you this morning? It's nice out. I mean, I think it's still pretty humid, but it's it's quite lovely. All right, let's get started. Hey, Kathy. Oh my gosh. I'm ready, but my dinosaur of an iPad is not. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Say hi as you're jumping on, starting with some twists. Just loosen up that body, loosen up the waist. Loosen up the hips, <laughs> just loosen up. Welcome, if you're joining for the first time or if you are just getting back into working out, maybe you're rejoining. I was talking to a friend this morning who um, has had to miss the workouts for a little bit since golfing season started because she's working. Um, but she will be returning soon. Well, not very soon <laughs> when golfing season is done. But um, if you're new or if you're just starting, remember, gentle reminder, gentle daily reminder, always take this at your own pace. Um, modify as needed. I will offer modifications as we go through. The number one thing that you want to remember every single time is you just need to show up. Some days are going to be good. Some days are going to be bad. Some days are going to be downright ugly. But the key to progress and forward movement is just to show up. So even if it's the ugliest thing ever, I know Heather struggled yesterday because she just had her second shot. And uh, you know what? Modify, right? hold back take take it back a notch take more rests do what you can right listen to your body but showing up is the number one deal breaker or I don't know it is going to be the difference between progress or staying stuck it's just showing up if you can get yourself to show up and then you can modify and don't judge about whether that workout went well or bad the, the all that matters is that you showed up and you did it, truly, right? Um, especially in the beginning. Especially in the beginning, the most critical part is show up. Commit to yourself and do it. Don't judge, don't criticize, don't care. Five months ago when we started these things, it was not pretty. And I, every single day that I came, showed up, even though I didn't want to, I truly, truly didn't, I mean that didn't want to show up to my own workouts um, and I also every single day thought my goodness I'm out of shape like I'm so far from where where I used to be I can't lift the same things I can't do a push-up like it was it can be mentally defeating to to be starting from that place that's so far from where in your mind you feel like you used to be or you want to be or you think you should be and you need to let all that go because that won't change if you don't show up. So it's a very long-winded, you guys know I'm long-winded. It's a long-winded way of saying modify anything. So this first round is low, no impact. You can keep it to low, no impact if you need to. You know, if Heather, great example for Heather, if she's doing this workout and she's feeling, you're feeling like, you're pushing too much just just take it back it's just a day okay so having said that now I'm gonna increase intensity a little bit for those of you who want to increase intensity um, if you're not ready yet, keep it at low impact some of you might be like in fierce badass shape right now you can actually push harder than me if you want How, however keep in mind this is the warm-up and the warm-up has in my mind two functions one is to warm up the body Right, get all the systems up and going for increased effort. So more oxygen, more blood flow to the muscles, um, all that good stuff, right? 
increasing the synovial fluid around the joints is one. And you know, I'm sorry, but as we get older, <laughs> we need our synovial fluid. We need our joints to be warmed up gently. When I watch my 12 year old run, he can go from zero to sprint, like boom. If I do that, I would pull a hamstring. So that's all I'm saying. Give yourself some grace um, and just kind of be proud of yourself for being here and showing up. So we're working on upper body today. Something's going on up here. <laughs> I don't know, don't know what, I can feel it on my face. We're working on upper body today. These sessions are morphing into largely uh, strength training because many of you are my age or older and I will, I will say strength training is critical because as we age, um, basically from mid thirties on, I was reminded as I was listening to something yesterday um, about diet, which I'm gonna share some of the little tidbits that I learned that I found really helpful. Um, whew, it's a lot warmer than I thought <laughs> once I start moving. As we age, we naturally lose muscle and bone density. That is just the way it is. That is just what happens as we hit about mid thirties. Oh, ladies, we lose a lot of things. <laughs> we lose our metabolism. Actually, the podcast talked about that. The podcast talked about our, the way we process nutrition and sort of explained why, you know, you hit that late thirties, early forties and you're like, you know, where did that come from? Or, and I hear it all the time because I'm in my mid forties. And so a lot of the people I talk to are like, I don't know, my body is just totally different these days. It doesn't respond the same. And he explained a little bit why it has to do with your um, digestive system, in fact. So digestion and ultimately metabolism, but um, strength training becomes super important resistance training because you can't stop that slowdown but you can mitigate it or you can um, if you're increasing strength while it's slowing down or decreasing like while you're losing that muscle and that bone density but you're what is what is happening up here um, you can like essentially slow it down right oh my goodness I'm not gonna <laughs> I feel like I have a toupee on my head right now and it's sliding off. <laughs> so if you're feeling good today, this is the round where you wanna push, you wanna go faster, you wanna get that heart rate up. Remember I always say, what, what we believe when we're out of shape and we're not, we believe that people who are in shape it's easier for them? No, that's a, that's a, that's a, no. <laughs> I can't think, I can't even talk. The fitter you get, the harder it gets. Does anybody tell you that? No, when you're out of shape, in, in a lot of ways, it's the easiest it's ever gonna be. It gets harder. So you're never going to, you're never gonna get to the point where the workouts are become easy what's going to happen is your mindset's going to change so you're going to get comfortable being uncomfortable you're going to get used to the feeling of discomfort when working out right we're out of shape it's really uncomfortable it hurts so we have this like illusion that if we were in shape it would feel better it doesn't feel better it feels just as bad maybe worse um, but the other thing is the other thing that changes is that we recover faster right so we don't necessarily ever feel any it doesn't really get easier we get more comfortable feeling when we feel you know a, a discomfort for the first time I mean we're wired to go like what's wrong what's wrong what's wrong is this right is this gonna hurt me is this gonna kill me <laughs> you know it's our primal senses kicking in when we feel it we get over it and we're fine 
we go, okay, it, it was fine. And, and our mind sort of relaxes. And then the other thing, like I said, is you'll notice that you can increase your heart rate easier and decrease it easier and faster, right? So that's what you wanna watch for, is for those changes. You know, also like, hey, I can do a full push-up now. Hey, I can lift the next weight up. I'm challenging you all as I'm just starting to increase all my weights. I brought out some heavier stuff today. I'm gonna try, I want you to do the same. Obviously with keeping good form. Now what is happening? Oh, it's just a piece that was hitting. Oh, this, this, this is happening. Let's tuck that away. Good morning. Hey Dawn. Oh, I was just talking about Dawn. Okay. We're doing strength training today, so that was the hardest part of the cardio part. Grab a drink. Um, you're going to want, I would say, a couple of different weights if you have them, like a heavier set. Let's try to, let's try to push ourselves and increase, increase the weight. Hey, I got my eyebrows done yesterday. They look pretty good, eh? Hey? <laughs> oh, like first time since March of 20, when did COVID start? 2020? 2020. I don't even know anymore. All right, I'm gonna set my timer. So we're doing 45 second, goodness me. My eyebrows look great. My hair on the other hand is not, I don't know what's happening. That's next up you guys. I got a hair to hair, I got my nails done. I got, it was like the week of me. I got my, I got a pedicure. I got my eyebrows and eyelashes done. I gotta get a haircut. <laughs> oh, tell that to my family. I think they like, my teenagers walk around with their AirPods on all the time. Is this why? <laughs> Is this why? Oh, okay. All right. Enough of that. I'm going to put this here. All right. We are starting with bent rows. You guys, I'm determined to have some muscles by, <laughs> by, November so we're really working on the upper body here okay let's go okay so we're in our bent bent row position and we're I should have grabbed heavier for these okay I'm, I'm not gonna lie I should have okay so you want to pull and you're working on that shoulder blade so you want to keep that back arched right but belly button pulled in and you're pulling so this is I mean, you're gonna get kind of like a stretch slash burn in the hamstrings and glutes, but we're working our back. We're working, our, you want your chest nice and open so you don't want any curv curvature happening. It's not the place for curves, ladies. Pulling, head is slightly up, so you wanna be looking slightly in front of you so you have a nice neutral neck. I wanted to offer to you all as well, um, if you ever feel like you want me to check your form, um, video yourself and send it to me. I'm happy, happy, happy to do so. Okay, I'm going heavier on these ones. Okay, we're gonna press, we're alternating. Okay, you're gonna press up over top of the middle of your head. I just put hand lotion on right before and now I'm all slippy, slippy. Okay, belly button's pulled in. Okay, knees are locked chest is open and you want to be pressing sort of think of being um, vertical to your forehead okay so kind of in front of you but not too far in front these ones um, form really matters because you don't want to put your shoulder out oh goodness all right, we're gonna to go to shoulder flies now. I was gonna try the heavier, but I'm gonna go with the light for the first. We're doing four rounds today. So we're gonna fly. So you wanna lead, I think of leading with my elbow. So you bring your arm up with your elbow. I'm determined to be lean, mean, and what rhymes with that? <laughs> Lean, mean, not machine. <laughs> That's too cliche. Lean, mean, and fierce doesn't have to rhyme. Doesn't have to rhyme. By the 
time I go to California <laughs> in end of October, beginning of November. This is my last hurrah this week for having wine. So we're doing, we're down on the, nope, we're not down on the ground yet. We're doing tricep extension next. A lot of upper body ladies. Big hugs to you too, Dawn. Can't wait to have you back. And Dawn invited like all her friends this morning to the group. <laughs> so I thank her for that. I, I don't know how, I don't have that many friends that she's got a lot of friends. <laughs> so remember those elbows, you wanna point straight up to the sky. I'm on a mission. I need everybody's help because I got a lot to say. <laughs> I just want to help women escape the nonsense in their heads, like, and, and coming from culture and society and, and the expectations we have. Okay, we're, we're going to be down. Oh, need this. Okay, we're gonna press. Um, I'm feeling this already. <laughs> Whew. Okay, so we're pressing up. Remember, you want to bring your arms down to like a 90, de 90 degree position, right? So your your wrists, your wrists should be perpendicular to your elbows. I gotta figure out a way to hold these so they don't bruise my forearms. Almost there, it's gotta be almost there. I can't see the clock, so that could be a complete lie, but. <sighs> Never believe a trainer when they say you're almost there. No, that's not true. A trainer would never lie. You know who always lies is people at, people at race, crowds and fans. Oh, you're almost there. It's just around the corner. Oh my God. For those of you who run, no. Never believe them. Okay, flies. It's a serious upper body set, ladies. Who's up for being lean, mean, and fierce with me? <laughs> oh, goodness. This is my last hurrah week before I cut out wine and chips for 90 days. I actually went four or five days with no chips already. Um, I had chips last night. I discovered I got to do some damage control when I'm at the baseball game. So we had, my son had a baseball game last night. My goodness. I was feeling really ambitious this morning. <laughs> okay, we're doing skull crushers with leg lifts next. Um, and I find like I, I took this Killer stir fry. I gotta say, gotta commend myself. I made the most amazing stir fry. Okay, so skull crusher, leg lift. Skull crusher, leg lift. Use that core. Pull that belly button in and lift with your core. If you wanna make it harder, don't rest your feet on the ground. So bring them down to about an inch. So I made this just delicious, if I do say so myself, stir fry. Um, and ate it at the game. But I'm telling you, by the time I was coming home for the game, I had this just not hunger, but slight, like, like pre-hunger. <laughs> like you know hunger's coming. And I need to get ahead of that when I'm coming home from the game. So tonight I'm gonna try taking a, like a protein smoothie with me. So here's what I learned ladies and I absolutely love this. And this is from a dietitian um, who has studied metabolic efficiency for you know the bulk of his career. So he's a sports dietitian, but here's what he taught he talked about on this podcast. He talked about the fact that um, how our bodies process carbs 
and, and I know a little bit about this because my sister had um, gestational diabetes and she controlled her gestational diabetes through diet. And what she had to do, so this makes total sense, she could have, she could have pasta, but she had to have it with um, a protein or a fat, I believe, or maybe both. I can't remember. She, she had to have pasta in a certain form. She could not have tomato sauce because it was so much sugar. So we're taking a rest. And we're going to do that three more times. I think we're going to have, we're not going to be able to lift our wine later, ladies. My nails. <laughs> um, so he talked about the, it, when you eat fruit, when you eat grains, when you eat veggies, when you eat carbs, now veggies are really high in fire, so they might be the exception, but every time you eat, especially something like fruit, because fruit is sugar, which is not bad, it's not bad, but to avoid your sugar levels or your insulin levels or glycemic levels, whatever the levels are, because I never memorized that part, from going like this all day, you need to pair it with a protein. So let's say you're having a banana, have it with some walnuts. If you're having, um, or some peanut butter, if or or hemp seeds even are, are fantastic. If you're having a peach, have it with, again, like Activity I like to pair completed. it with like some nuts. Um, Mary's crackers are seeds and a lot of those seeds. All right, are we ready for this? We're gonna be lean and mean and fierce. Fierce is one of my favorite words. We need shirts that just say fierce, period. Okay, let's go. Pulling, so I want you to lean forward a little bit more than I did last time, but make sure that butt is cocked, belly button's pulled in, and you're pulling with your shoulder blade. Make sure when you're bringing it down, oh my God, excuse me, that was really rude. <laughs> um, you're not curving, so you want to keep, remember, always keep that shoulder blade back. It's going to protect your shoulders and keep you from, you know, putting them under stress in a compromised position. So what he said was he started teaching his clients something called the one-to-one -one ratio. And he said you can pretty much live your life by this one-to-one -one ratio. He said, he calls it the hand rule. So you, if you have one, you have the other. And you essentially want to pair the two in like equal, equal amounts. So the other thing, my sister was able to have, one of the things that she had first thing in the morning was um, an, an English muffin or a, I think that's what they're called, um, with an egg and a little bit of cheese, I think she said, or you could do avocado. And it didn't spike her blood sugar. If you're gonna have berries or fruit, which you should, you wanna have it with some kind of protein or fat. He suggests protein. He also recommends, oh Lord. <laughs> okay, we gotta, we gotta be almost there, right? <sighs> I think I did an extra, one on this side for both sets. As we age, right, we talked about our bone density and our muscle mass, it, it deteriorates, right? So even if you're, if you don't work out, right, if you don't do any kind of training, that is gonna happen. It's just the, it's just the way the law of the human body. Um, if you do and you want to focus more and more on resistance and strength training as you age less on cardio if your goal is health and well-being right um, you can sort of mitigate and compensate for that slowdown but that slowdown is still gonna happen um, and then the other thing he talked about was and I've heard this so many times before is protein and he he said during some studies that he read or conducted, I'm not sure, to be honest. Tricep, no, don't need these again. Tricep extension next. Um, women in their 60 to 65 range actually had to double, required double the amount of protein 
that they did prior to that, right? So Corinne, protein, good quality protein would be something that you want to make sure is abundant in your diet. So I would say, and I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a nutritionist, but what I would recommend, I think, is, again, back to what I always teach. 50% veggies, right, on your plate, 50%. So for lunch, that could look like a huge salad. For dinner, that could look like stir fry or steamed. That was really, I know, that was really uh, a cop out there. Um, right, and then what you do is you take your grain that you're gonna add or your carbs. So maybe it's sweet potatoes, maybe it's squash, maybe it's, um, I've been doing couscous lately. Do you guys eat couscous? Like, it is like legit the easiest thing to make ever. I, yesterday I didn't even boil the water. I used it from my kettle <laughs> and you just put equal amount. Well, it depends on the couscous you buy, but you, you just literally boil the water, throw the couscous in, take it off the stove, put the lid on and it's ready in like five, 10 minutes. So easy. Uh, rice, quinoa, um, love farro. I'm a, such a fan of farro. I find it really dense and filling. I'm dying here. <laughs> Um, my wrists, I toughen up these wrists. So then, so you build your plate with half veggies. So maybe it's a huge salad of, of greens, all different veggies. I would say too, try to, try to have as much variety in your diet, right? Cause every piece of produce has a special, unique, you know, vitamin and mineral makeup. The more variety that you can bring into your diet, the better. So if you like, my son eats the exact same thing every day. So he eats well. <laughs> it's, a, it's a kale salad with carrots and celery on it. <laughs> and uh, eats a lot of pasta. I'm trying to get him to eat more protein. But, you know, a variety. So if you're doing a salad, like mix up the different greens that you're putting in it. Use different, you know, colored peppers. And um, I like to buy the shredded, the pre-shredded beets. I like to treat myself to some of that stuff prepped already because I love them, but I hate prepping them. So I just buy the pre-shredded beets, um, you know, different colors and kinds of onions. And then you top it or you put to the side your, your protein of choice and your grain or your, your carb, and they should be equal, equal amounts, I would think. So, Roughly. I like to do probably about a third to half a cup usually of, of grain, if I'm doing a grain. Um, maybe a half to a full cup if you're doing sweet potatoes or squash. And then your protein can be, you want lean, good quality protein. So this is where, you know, we wanna invest a little bit in good quality protein and good quality produce. Produce is you know, in season, so this is the time when I really like to play around with unique, different, we're not done, I don't know why I'm sitting up. Back down, um, you know, because it's cheaper, like I bought bean sprouts yesterday, I never buy them, they were like $1.99 or something. I bought, you know, you can buy different produce this time of year because of the seasons. In the, in the fall, winter, I, I do more like frozen because the nutri nutrient, um, what am I trying to say? The nutrients are preserved because essentially frozen produce is picked and frozen right away. It's, some people say um, frozen actually has more nutrients just because of they haven't traveled. It, it gets frozen immediately after picking. Is anyone else feeling like extreme jelly arms right now? What's our last, ex oh yes, the press the ups. This is where our fierce, oh, that's no good. Okay, we're gonna press. Come up 
as high as you can. And you can do these, again, you can do these with no weight. If you're brand new and you're just joining for the very, very first time and you're you're totally out of shape, you can do the whole dang thing with no weights, without weight. Um, movement is the first step, right? Movement and mental, checking in mentally. So you can do the whole workout with no weight. And we did, when we began five months ago, we didn't use weights. Okay, that's 45 seconds. The clock, um, I did change the clock. All right, that's two down, two to go. Anyone else feeling like jello, jello right now? Are you working out with me today, Dawn? Activity completed. I didn't know you were working out, I thought you were at work. So yesterday, and, and I have, this happens a lot. Um, I had somebody reach out and ask me about um, fasting. Or, so fasting and keto or, like, look at this nonsense. Okay. I need a hat. <laughs> Yay. Both Dons are here. Um, I was supposed to wait. Did we miss something? Like, I don't know why we were off off a set there. Did I do? I don't know what I did on that round. I know, Dawn. I know she loves the weights. Yeah, you've been missing out. We're going to be really focusing on weights. I have, I have a personal goal I'm mulling around in my mind for next year, and it's going to require some serious strength on my part. <laughs> so we are going to continue. All right, let's go round. We might only do three rounds today. I, I might have under, I might have miscalculated time again. All right, I know I started the clock and I'm not lifting it. Okay, here we go. I don't know what I was rambling about. Um, oh, remember, we're all a study of one, right? I'm gonna share my perspective and my perspective always comes from a health and well-being point of view, right? So my, my goal always is wellness before weight loss. I feel like there's a lot of trends. There's a lot of, these trends come from somewhere, you guys. These trends aren't fa false or mythical per se. I forgot bicep curls. I wanted to do bicep curls today. Um, so for example, the, the ketogenic diet is actually highly studied and touted for people with clinical issues. Um, Alzheimer's I know is one dementia and there's, there's a few other ones. What happens is it, it gets adopted by the public, um, and maybe the seed of what was good in it gets kind of blown up too much, right? Generally speaking, ketogenic diets aren't ideal for women on account of their effects on women's hormones, right? For women, it's always a matter of managing those, those hormones, right? Oh my God. <laughs> Shall we? Um, studies have generally shown and again it's generally so there may be the odd woman i actually know somebody who lost like over 100 pounds and has kept it off on keto but th for the typical woman i'm um, also it's a really difficult diet to follow because it's very very strict to be in ketosis um i gotta say stop saying um so much <laughs> i'm trying to lift at the same time Generally speaking, women do better with carbs in their diet. That doesn't mean their diet is all carbs. It means that we need, typically our bodies have a higher demand for carbs in order to function optimally than men do. Um, the right carbs is key, right? The choosing good carbs, not bad carbs. That goes without saying, I imagine. Okay, tricep extensions. This is probably our last round, so hang in there. 
Grab a heavier weight if you need to. If it's your first time bag dawn, go. <laughs> no, she loves it. I know she, and she's gonna be so sore and she's gonna love every second of it, every inch of soreness. We also, our bodies are also of, like constantly changing, right? Men's are kind of a lot more steady state. So we actually have higher demands for carbs at a specific time of month too in order to supply the, you know, adequate energy to the rest of the body. Okay, no, 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 we got this, we got this, we got this. A few more. Pull the belly in. I knew, that, I knew it was coming. Flies. Okay, down on the ground. So, she, so this woman asked me, you know, like, can I do this and can I do that? And my question from now on is always going to be, I think there's two things that we ought to do before we do anything else with regards to like managing macros, cutting calories, you know, cutting macros, cutting food altogether through intermittent fasting. What are you eating? What are you eating in the first place, right? Let's fix what you're eating first, then we can work on portions, right? How much are you eating? Because our world is supersized. I mean, and it's, it's mental, right? Like I, I'm guilty of it too. Like how do you eat a little tiny portion anymore? Cause it looks like you're going to starve. Meanwhile, if you eat it, it's like, you know, when you go to those fancy restaurants, right? And they give you little tiny portions and you're like, what the heck is this? Cause you're used to eating at Eastside Mario's and <laughs> stuffing two or three <laughs> servings of soup and salad and then shoving a like it's hard mentally but yet yet you're you're at the very least satisfied if not slightly full um but that comes after and the two things that i think we all need to do first before we worry about anything else okay i'm gonna make it three what are you eating are you eating whole foods so cut out the processed foods if you can cut them out entirely, fantastic, but 80-20. Cut out the sugary processed drinks, right? Let's get water, you know, tea and coffee is fine. But cut out the, the pop for sure, for sure, for sure. Pop is poison, you guys, I hate to say it, pop is poison. It's easy for me, I never actually developed the, other than when I run then I really like pop, but otherwise, no. Um, my poison is wine, <laughs> as you all know. Leg lift. Cut out the pop, cut out juice, cut out sugary drinks, all like cut out um, sugary coffees. If you can do those two things and, and maintain it for, I would say six months, six months of eating like that, let your body adapt. Right? Let your body um, change from the inside out. Your body will come alive. You'll be sleeping. You'll have energy. You'll be alert. Um, and then you start going, okay, where am I now? And six months later, give your body a chance to adapt and evolve to eating food, right? Even three months, even three months. And then go, okay, now what do I need to do now? Maybe there are food sensitivities, right? Like there are, you know, my husband can't eat certain foods. They, I can't eat raw broccoli. Like it makes me super gassy. It's, it's not good to be in the car with me if I eat raw broccoli. Um, you know, then you start paying attention. But you really, I really don't know if you can identify that stuff when your body's so inflamed and um, like short circuited. I don't know what the word is from you need to give almost like give it give it a chance for the dust to settle and then say okay take notice i find quinoa actually makes me gassy too i don't know why um i think that's the you're supposed to rinse it and i don't <laughs> i'm the laziest cook like literally on the planet it's the um the little like covering of it can, can cause uh indigestion for some people okay where are we at we need to do our grand slam perfect timing okay we're gonna finish with our grand slam 
movements. How's everybody doing? Anybody weak? Everybody ready for a... I love broccoli, but I can't eat it raw. Oh my goodness. But I will say too, and I, and I harp on my clients and I harp on my kids for this. When I was a teenager, I did not touch broccoli. I did not touch anything that had any nutritional components to it whatsoever. Um, your tastes can change and you can make yourself like stuff. And I have made myself like stuff over the years. Um, all right, we're gonna start with our 10 squats. So de be determined to add variety to your diet. That means trying new things. That means trying things you tried in the past and didn't like. I would not touch fish, <laughs> like not a chance. Fish and chips, yes, no, no fish. Now I don't mind it. Um, my husband, when I met him, ate white bread, iceberg lettuce, did not touch pork. I'm gonna do two more because I wasn't counting. One, two, he eats pork. He eats kale now, right? I had a hard time getting him to eat romaine initially. You have to decide mentally. I need to do this for my health. It doesn't mean you have to like everything. You don't have to like everything. Okay, let's get our push-ups. No, let's do our no, let's do our push-ups. You don't have to like everything, but you need to like more than a few things, right? Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, last one, 10. Oh my goodness. Okay, we need to do some burpees. Okay, we did our, that's three down. This is number four. Woo, we got a little head rush there. Two, remember you can do these with or without the jump. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whoo, ten, ten burpees, okay, that's four, I guess say we did our core, okay, we're gonna do boat next, that's five, what are we missing? Oh, bowl and plank. Okay, let's start with, let's start with plank. Okay, ready? Go. You can do whole high plank, low plank, get that butt down, squeeze those shoulder blades, pull the belly button in, head is up a little bit. Don't, don't tuck your chin, squeeze the quads, Squeeze the butt, squeeze it all, but breathe it out. <laughs> uh, I think we have eight seconds. Hang on there, hang in there, hang in there. Two, one, okay. And now we have bolt. And then I think we're done. Okay, ready? I'm not doing any more boat than I have to. <laughs> and, you, and you can't make me. Okay, ready? Go. Okay, so make sure, most of all, make sure that back is pushed in. Um, lower the feet if you can. That's gonna make it harder. Breathing through it. Pulling that belly button in, shoulder blades are back and down. Straighten the legs. Ah! <laughs> We're almost there. Eight seconds. Breathe through it. Use that core. I don't know, I've been doing these every day almost and they get harder. I think they're getting harder. <laughs> what the heck, anyone else feel that way? Okay, Jello. thank you for joining me. Have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow. Go crush your day. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Thanks for always keeping me going.